Oh, I just wanted to make a quick video and say Happy Thanksgiving. And because it is Thanksgiving, I wanted to remember some of the Native Americans. Uh, not widely like the indoctrinated foolish stories were told uh, when we were in school. Uh, but this has to do with the uh, Haudenosaunee. Uh, otherwise, it's the French term for the Iroquois. So, um they had such a great influence on our constitutional republic uh, well before we even started fomenting it, and uh, it moved up. So before I begin this uh, little thing, I wanted to remember um, probably one of the uh, biggest contributors well before the founding of uh, the Constitution, more close to the Articles of Confederation. Uh, his name was Conestatego, and he stated this in 1744 to the uh, colonial governors. Our wise forefathers established union and amity between the five nations. This has made us formidable. This has given us great weight and authority with our neighboring nations. We are a powerful confederacy. And by your observing the same methods our wise forefathers have taken, you will acquire such strength and power. Therefore, whatever befalls you, never fall out with one another. And with that, I hope you enjoy this. And... Uh, Hopefully I'll see y'all next time. Daganawida, a holy man, had a vision of five nations being united under a symbolic tree of peace. He said that the tribes must stop fighting and live in harmony by forming a government of law. He said that the people should consider courage, patience, and honesty as the most important human characteristics and that they should always put the future welfare of the people ahead of anything else. He also said, carry no anger and hold no grudges. Think of continuing generations of our families. Think of our grandchildren and of those yet unborn. Another Indian by the name of Hayanwatha heard what Daganawida had said and became very moved by it. He began to travel from one tribe to another in the area which is now known as New York, spreading the idea of a confederation. One by one, the leaders of the five large tribes agreed to observe the great law of peace. The Mohawk first accepted the idea. They sent messengers to Onida, who agreed to make peace. Soon the Onondaga and the Cayuga and the Seneca of the Northeast Woodlands joined with the others, and later the Tuscarora, who had fled the former homes of the Carolinas, also became members. The League of Six Nations agreed to stop fighting amongst themselves and cooperate with each other for a common defense. With this, each tribe kept control of its own tribal affairs, but the tribes united together in matters that had to do with other tribes and later with foreign countries. The Iroquois Confederacy called themselves the Haudenosaunee, or people of the Longhouse. The Confederacy held meetings in the Onondaga Territory in what is now Syracuse, New York, which was the center of the Iroquois country. Every year, usually in the late summer or fall, each tribe sent a delegation of chiefs to the Great Council. Fifty chiefs would meet together, although other people were free to attend the council meetings, and all decisions were reached after lengthy deliberations by the chiefs, and decisions were made by consensus. That is, that everyone had to agree. Each tribe had one vote equal to each of the others, and within the deliberations, considerations were always made with the primary concern being the seventh generation, the one yet unborn. The members of this confederation spoke of each other as brothers, and they symbolized their league as a bundle of arrows which became stronger by being united. See, the idea was that it was easy to break one arrow, but if a group of them were held together, they were much harder to break. See, and if we go forward in history to 1841, we can see just how influential the Iroquois were to, to some, like John Vian Throop, who cut the die for the official seal on the reverse side. And it caused a lot of controversy because it was prescribed 13, but he made it 6. And why did he do this? Well, because he studied history and knew that Charles Thompson first preferred 5 or 6 arrows for the League of the Iroquois. 